Hey, good evening, everybody. Evening. Hola. How's everybody doing tonight? Doing well, sir. How are you? Can't complain. I am uh, a little bit out of my element. I'm down in Kentucky. <laughs> so I'm in a hotel room and uh, had a little trouble getting on online here. So, y'all set? Yeah, I think we're good. We'll wait a few minutes here. People uh, sure. jumping on. It's a beautiful drive down here, Mike. What you? What road you take? You remember? I just set the uh, set the uh, directions and went. Followed the directions, and I only got pulled over once. Oh, that's not bad. In West yeah. Virginia? Yeah, they just gave me a warning. It was actually Maryland before I got into West Virginia. Okay. I had never been over here on the uh, west side of West Virginia. It's a real pretty drive. I mean, it's yeah. just mountains and green everywhere. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's a little difficult in the winter, though. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> George, Trent, Ruben, how's everybody? Good, Dan. How are you? Good. Kevin, how are you? Doing well. Good. There he is. Dan, you're in a different room tonight. I am. I was just saying I'm in a hotel down in uh, Kentucky. Oh, no kidding. What part? Uh, outside of Lexington. Dude, no, no way. What, where, where, what hotel are you at? I'm at a, well, it's about an hour outside of Lexington. What part? What part? It's like right on the uh, West Virginia border. I don't even know the name of the town. I just I was telling Mike I just followed the directions here. <laughs> 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 I was gonna say because I'm uh, I'm actually from Lexington. Oh, are you? That's yeah. Funny. I'll be there tomorrow. Do you uh, do you play golf? I I very little, very little. They've got a uh, it's uh, it's oh it's called uh, Griffin Gate. It's like a Marriott course. If you can get out there, yeah, it's worth the money. It's beautiful. Cool. Maybe next time. I don't have the clubs with me. This is a this is a business trip. Right on. We're gonna wait for uh, Ryan and Lawrence to jump on, and then we'll get started, guys. Lawrence will be on in just a minute. He had the wrong link. Who did Lawrence? Yeah, he'll be on in just a minute. Okay. <laughs> Gary, welcome. Sorry, I was just on the phone with the doctor in New Jersey for half an hour. That's all right. Business, business calls. <laughs> all right, I'm just going to go on mute here for. All right, great. But I am here. Okay, great. Ryan, welcome. Sherry, Rahena, Rachel, Maddie, Julie. Thanks for joining us tonight, Adriana. Good evening, everybody. Hey, Ryan. How you doing, buddy? Good. How are you guys? Fantastic. Great. Good. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. For those of you who are here on time, I apologize for the for the little bit late start here. We just wanted to wait for a few more people to roll in. For those of you who weren't on, uh, I was talking about, uh, I'm down in uh, Kentucky today. Um, had about an eight hour drive to get down here and uh, had a lot of time to think. It's a beautiful country coming through West Virginia. And uh, I was doing a lot of thinking about our business and um, kind of where the business is going and the changes that have been taking place over the last three, four months with uh, the advent of the COVID-19 and what that's done to our business, it's actually been a really good thing, I believe. Um, not for those of you who may have uh, seen some disruption in your normal jobs, uh, obviously unfortunate, but we're seeing tremendous growth in, uh, in the Pharmanex business right now. 
Uh, and I was really thinking on my way down here about what my why is for the business. And, you know, I think if you're, if you're doing anything in life, you really need to think about why you're doing that. And, you know, for me in particular, I got thinking about my previous lifestyle with my job, um, where I did, I had very limited time for social interaction and to enjoy the things that I, that I like to do, like hiking and camping and mountain biking, fishing and things like that. Um, so that was my my main why. But my second why is that I want to help people. I always said that um, when I got out of med device, I, I wanted to do something else, and it had to be something where I was where I was helping people. And this kind of ticked that box as well because I can help uh, with my leadership skills. Help those of you who are are looking to create a secondary form of income or a or a long lasting residual income for yourselves. Um, and so that's kind of what's, what's gotten me really excited about this business is that I can help people financially, uh, find their way in this business and, and be successful. Uh, I also was thinking a little bit about, um, why this business makes sense from a, um, a business standpoint. And I was thinking about, you know, why this particular business with Pharmanex. And it ticked off a bunch of boxes for me. Uh, one of them was, you know, there's a ton of, ton of MLM businesses on the market um, out there. There's new ones popping up every day. And I kind of thought about three questions that um, why this business made sense for me and why I think it'll make sense for you as well. And the first one was, would I still consume these products and services if there's no opportunity to market them? And anybody who's taken a look at the research that we have, the products, the scientific team, things like that, um, the bioplatonic scanner and the technology that's involved with that, um, it definitely ticked off that box for me. And then the, the second thing was whether or not these products actually bring any benefit to the consumer besides an opportunity to just make money, which we know that they do. You know, if you take a look at the, at the data that we have, the clinicals on some of the some of the uh, products that we have, and then you look at the science and, and the backing that we have from studies, uh, the 85 peer reviewed journal articles and the, the scientific team at Pharmanex, it, it ticked that box as well. And then the third one is, would, would this bring value to customers if they consume these products? And it obviously ticked that box for me as well. So, you know, really what we're doing is we're, um, allowing physicians to practice preventive medicine by incorporating this device into their and in the, in the supplements into their practice. Uh, preventive medicine in the U.S. is obviously lacking. And so this gives those physicians an opportunity who are, are more patient-based to, to dive into this technology and the supplements and provide preventive medicine type healthcare. Uh, if you look what's going on in healthcare, I just saw the numbers. I think we spend 20% of our GDP on uh, on healthcare, which is a huge number, it's in the trillions of dollars, um, and and obviously if we could help docs uh, practice preventive medicine with their patients, we can help mitigate some of these diseases. Not only drive down costs, and if you look at the costs associated with taking supplements uh, from a positive standpoint that they provide, um, increasing your health and the antioxidants in particular. Um, mitigating disease and protecting your cells, um, $67 a month or $140 a month really isn't all that much. If you look at the, the investment, uh, your health is, is an investment. Uh, it's one of those things that we can actually have some control over. And so I think it's really important uh, what we're doing here. Uh, we're, we're allowing physicians to increase their, their revenue health uh, as well, which allows them to maybe spend more time with their patients uh, maybe take a few extra days off a month, which is going to obviously make them be better physicians uh, and provide better treatment to, to their patients. So um, we talked a lot about this um, over the last couple of months and specifically in, in the beginning of COVID-19 about, about distraction. There's a lot of distractions right now. We've had the distractions of COVID-19 for three or four months now. Um, there's some additional distractions going on in the, in, in the, uh, in other environments right now. Um, but what we can do is really continue to focus on this business. I think 
uh, the more you focus on it and you have that drive and desire, the higher uh, it, your, it increases your probability of success in this business. And we talk about it all the time about being consistent. You know, if you use that drive and desire uh, to, to, for whatever your why is, why you got involved in this business, whether it be lifestyle change, uh, financial, um, spending more time with your family, uh, being able to afford some vacations, some extra vacations, or whatever that why may be, um, you know, just use that drive and desire that first got you interested in this business, drive through this distraction to, um, to be successful. So, Mike, Ryan, do you guys have anything to add uh, along those lines? I know we, we've, we've said all along, don't, don't waste this crisis. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of us that have been doing a really good job at not being distracted by it and kind of driving through, through that distraction to, to be successful. I agree. Um, I do agree with, with everything that you said. The, the distractions are still here. Um, I know that the east coast of Florida, I just heard today, was going on lockdown again because they had another surge of, of COVID cases. So people are looking, uh, you know, they're, they're still looking, um, looking for things to do. You know, they're not getting back to work anytime soon in, in a lot of areas. And uh, what better time to be in preventive medicine? Absolutely. Good point, Mike. I mean, if you look at the statistics and what's going on around the country, um, I think it's kind of what we expected as things started to open back up. People would, you know, we have a short term memory here in the U.S. Um, for all things, uh, but in particular for things that uh, we feel like are taking away our freedoms. And, you know, Governor Cuomo yesterday was talking about locking down Manhattan and Hampton, the Hamptons, uh, because people weren't social distancing and wearing masks and things like that. And you're seeing that all over the country. So we're seeing another huge spike uh, happen right now with COVID-19. Um, so who knows where this is going to go in the future. But as Mike said, there's not a better time to be in preventive medicine than right now with the, with the products that we have um, and the technology that we have available to us. So. Um, Mike, you're, you're, you're laughing a little bit there. Did you just get something in the chat? <laughs> yeah. Someone told me I got a nice haircut. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even notice. Nice haircut. I, I was too, too consumed with the new puppy you just got. I didn't even notice. Is he right there? Yeah, he's there. <laughs> he, he doesn't want to be on, he doesn't want to be on video. So, I hope that all made sense to everybody. I, I know you're all out there working hard. And, oh, there he is. There's Conan, everybody. New, new addition to the team. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So uh, I know everybody's out there working hard, and a lot of you are chomping at the bit for things to get opened up a little bit more. Hopefully that happens here in the near, near future. Um, uh, lots of good things going on. I, I I look at the last three months and what I've four months and what I've been doing. I I look at it as kind of the uh, the the planning before the game, uh, putting all the trying to put all the parts and pieces together. So when this thing opens back up, the puzzle all starts to fit together and and uh, success will follow. So uh, along those lines, we've had having a ton of success lately. Um, I placed a, a few scanners in the last. 10 to 12 days, um, and I've got a couple of gentlemen who joined the team recently uh, who are just knocking it out of the park um, with their connections. Uh, so Jerry, if you don't mind, I just want to kind of call you out a little bit. Um, Jerry and I, Jerry Savage and I had, have, had worked together for a number of years about, uh, I don't know, 10 or 15 years ago, and then we kind of parted ways for a little while there, he went to a different company. I stayed where I was at, and then we, we reconnected uh, about two years ago now. And I introduced him to the business about three years, three months ago, I'm sorry, four months ago maybe, and, and he really did a due diligence on everything we had to offer. And uh, he got a scanner about two weeks ago, and uh, he's super excited about the business. So Jerry, if you could just maybe mention a little bit about how we initially started chatting about this business and then kind of what made the difference for you to jump in with both feet and, and get the scanner. You may be muted. Yeah. 
on mute. How's that? Better? There you go. Yep, better. Yeah, hi, everybody. Uh, yeah, Jerry Savage. I live in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I'm originally from New England area, born in Massachusetts, and spent a lot of time in Maine. But um, So I've been in orthopedics for like over 30 years in various roles. So the good thing is I know a lot of people around the U.S. Um, but I did my due diligence. Yeah, I, uh, Dan and I have been friends. He showed me the scanner, coffee shop. Um, and I looked at it and, you know, I said, okay. And I started listening to some calls and then, um, it, you know, I'm a rock. So, you know, I'm a Marine. So the only thing I know how to do is take a hill. So it takes me a while to really sink in and get stuff. So I, um, once I got it and really grasped onto it, I said, it was like a holy shit moment almost. So it's like, here we are in the middle of COVID-19. And, and everybody's, you know, you talk about people dying in nursing homes and I'm thinking, you know, wow, uh, elderly people. I was in the villages the week before this whole thing shut down because um, I'm in medical device, obviously. So I was with an orthopedic surgeon down there. But my God, I was like, you look at this and say, everybody's going to be looking at preventive medicine. So once I really felt comfortable that the scanner, what it did, knew how to talk about it. Um, and then saw the income potential, um, you know, it's like the gloves are off, you know, for me, um, I, I run an orthopedic company, so I'm a VP of sales in a medical device company and just reaching out to people that I know on the side. Um, I mean, I, I honestly, I didn't even, I don't even have to touch LinkedIn. And so to give you an example, I scanned three people on Friday on my way to Maine one of those persons already got a scanner uh, today. Um, I talked to two orthopedic surgeons tonight, set up uh, four phone calls for tomorrow. And Dan's been helping me with phone calls like every week. I think we've had three to five phone calls, three, like sometimes three phone, three way calls in a day. So yeah, I'm really excited about it because I think there's an opportunity here. And Dan talked about the why. And if I'm rambling, Dan, just stop. Oh, go ahead, you're fine. Um, you know, Dan talked about the why, and, um, you know, I, I, I've been a student of sales all my life, and that's what I've done, sales and marketing, and, um, you know, you're, you want to be, first, when you're younger, you want to be really successful. You want to be really successful, and you want to make a lot of money, but what it comes down to is the why is what you really want that money to give you, and that's that lifestyle and peace of mind, and and for guys that have been, that you guys that are in the medical device industry, like I know Kevin Brooks is, for instance, I mean, the amount of stress that we carry is just, is just unbelievable. So, um, you know, if you could help patients, help physicians gain a revenue uh, stream and make a lot of money in the process and <laughs> set it, set everybody up for, you know, into perpetuity with a great product that works. And I mean, it's a home run. It's, uh, and you got to look at it that way. And you just got to go, you, you shouldn't be bashful about calling anybody about it. I mean, I just talked to an orthopedic and orthopedic surgeon in New Jersey. I haven't talked to him in three years. He called me back. And, um, you know, when he got off the phone, he said, can you send me the information tonight? Absolutely, I can. You know, I'm texting with a surgeon. I'm texting with an orthopedic surgeon who does about 500 total joints a year uh, down in uh, Florida right now tonight. And he's texting me back wanting more information. So... You know, it's just, it's just been a great ride. Yeah. So Jerry, I've only been doing, I guess how many weeks have I been doing this, Dan? <laughs> uh, two weeks, of, two weeks officially. I yeah. think. So Jerry's. That's, doing, that's all I got. Cause I'll ramble on and that's all. Uh, I Jerry's, have. Thank you for sharing Jerry, but Jerry's doing all the right things. You know, I talked about, I talk about this on a pretty regular basis that sales reps are kind of independent guys and they have a hard time asking for help. Um, or working in a team environment, but that's what this is all about. Um, we're all here to, to teach you guys, um, teach you what we know, teach you what's working for us, um, here to do calls with you and things like that. And Jerry has not uh, batted an eyelash at calling me and, and asking me for help on these three-way calls and things. And I, he's going to be very, very successful. Not not just because he's asking me for help, but he's he's learning. He wants to learn the business, and the way he's going to learn the business is learning, uh, listening to us talk about the products and the technology and things like that. 
especially now that we, we are unable to have the healthcare conferences uh, for the last four months. So um, just the, the breadth of where Jerry's taken this in two wait weeks is for me, it's almost unimaginable um, that he's been able to do this with, a, with having a full-time job. So it's all about making the time. Um, if this is something that, that is gonna tick off that why for you, um, you know, look at what your distractions are and, you know, think about your drive and desire and how you're going to use those things or, or in the case of distraction, how you're going to ignore those distractions and spend a little bit more time on the business. You know, we all have extra time. It's all, it's all in how we decide we want to spend that extra time and how that may uh, benefit us, not only in, in, the, in the here and now, but in the future as well. So that Jerry, thanks a lot uh, for, for sharing. Um, he's got a, a, just a ton of contacts and uh, the conversations that we're having are going very, very well. Nothing happens overnight, um, but I'm expecting some really, really good things in the next couple of weeks. So, Sut, are you on, on the line by any chance? Uh, Sut? I am. Oh, Sut, hey, how you doing? I'm doing um, bueno. This is uh, everybody. This is Sut Patel. He joined us about two weeks ago. Um, he got a scanner. Uh, I want to say a week a week or so ago. Uh, you're down. He's down in Florida, and um, he saw the value in this uh, technology. And you know, he's kind of in the same boat as I was with Med Device and a lot of other Med Device reps, where you know you're super stressed out. You're you know, living minute to minute by when you're going to get that next call and have to jump in the car and rush, rush to, to grab instruments or implants and get to the hospital. Um, so I know that for Sut, that was one of the, one of the whys for him, but I want to just ask you a little bit about how you kind of validated this Sut. Um, I know you used the, uh, you know, you used the information that we sent you, but you also had some family members that you could talk to about it. And so if you could just kind yep. of us, talk us through that process for yourself. Yeah, so exactly. So I think a lot of people that are on this uh, phone call have either was introduced to this product from LinkedIn or word of mouth. Uh, fortunately, I was in touch with Mike Cook. He gave me information and he reverted me to you, Dan. And that was the reason for the most part, if a individual that is way more successful than I am in medical device sales is willing to give up his whole distributorship, I need to look into this opportunity a little bit further, right? So obviously read through the information. My dad's a board certified general surgeon. He went through all the information. They're there to help me out as well. We talked about it and it was an easy decision to be honest. And I mean, in the sense of if you're only thinking about the $2,500 investment in hopes of so much bigger, then it was an easy call for, for myself. I obviously relay that information to um, my low hanging fruit, right? Anyone that's in medical device sales, as long as Jerry and then and Dan as, you, as, as well as you, we built relationships for such a long period of time. And now we've had their family members over, their kids, they will listen to the idea and opportunity to help me out or others that are in this world with those relationships. And Going through exactly what Jerry said about this pandemic and how private practices are completely getting crushed, having to do furlough and all that horrible things, they can look at it as two ways, helping me out or also helping their practice and their employees out. So I relayed that information to my doctors. They were interested immediately, just like Jerry said, he's got contacts everywhere. It's, it's, preventive healthcare, something that like we've all talked about that they don't know, but we can educate them. But they can also look at the financial part of it as well. And if it's helping myself, Jerry, Dan, and anyone else that's on this phone call and medical device sales, they, they're willing to do that. I mean, they're, they've got you in the OR, or at least me now, not you anymore, Dan, um, willing to use products that may be equivalent or slightly better than other companies and wanting to help you know us out so it's been an amazing transition for me i mean i'm still going to continue doing what i'm doing until i get to dan's role where i can give up my legit job to do this but 
Um, with Lawrence being in, in my caddy, um, Ace of Spades, I mean, he's been absolutely amazing for me with a certain uh, few meetings that I've set up. And there's going to be contracts signed coming this week. So it's been a great process for me. And now it just motivates me to not only talk to more doctors, but to get on more reps that need to get the hell out of the business that we're in, right? I mean, they've got families, they've got kids, they need a better lifestyle. And where medical device sales is going with cap pricing and you know, two vendor systems, this is a whole different venue. Use your relationships and continue to help them out in a different manner my two cents. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing. Could you just tell us a little bit about how your first two meetings went and what the response was from the physicians? Sure. sure. So it's, uh, again, going after the friendships and relationships that are going through what I said earlier, um, that want to introduce a new idea just because it's helping me out as well. But the way they looked at the opportunity and having just a scanner at the front desk for the office manager or simply the front desk girl to do, let's just say bulk of the job. And then they, them giving the two cents of like, I think your health is not great. I recommend this. And the numbers that we see on the spreadsheet, like I'm just learning about the spreadsheet, but it's crazy that you show them the little amount of work that they have to do. And again, I'm looking at the cell size guys. I apologize because I've always been in sales, not benefiting the patient. Obviously, it benefits the patient. But if I'm talking to a private practice doctor who's looking for extra income, they're, the way they looked at it, I mean, one doctor said it's an absolute no-brainer who is a podiatrist who's the king of the pen in Fort Lauderdale of a residency program. And he said uh, to Lawrence and I that he's going to share this information to not – only his two par uh, partners, but others that have graduated through his uh, residency program. This could be a cash cow for not only us as individuals, but for them, for their practice, and also whoever they refer to. So if you look at the whole global thing about this thing, it helps out everyone, right? So if the individuals on this phone call not liking what I'm saying about income, okay, fine, but it's benefiting the patient as well, but, it's not, it's not depleting anyone. It's a no brainer. And both my guys, and I'm going to set up more uh, appointments. It's such an easy sell. Thank you for Lawrence for being with me. He's such a rock star. Uh, I've learned a ton from him and Dan, you've been great, but for the week that I've been on board and I've already pretty much got two scanners signed up and your one comment was that's $80,000 on the low end. I mean, and I don't have to do anything the rest of the time with those two doctors. Are you kidding me? I don't understand why any sales rep in any fashion of the world who doesn't have connections wouldn't buy into this idea on the sales side. Yeah, awesome. You know, um, is gonna tell me, you got to look at it more on the benefit side of the patient and don't bring lunches and da -da -da -da. <laughs> listen we all tackle uh, other issues different ways as long as we get to the same goal so let me that that's all great information um we're obviously here number first and foremost for the patient <laughs> um, um, well you know that's I'm not, well you I'm know what that's kidding. but you know what though um, so I think there's a lot of medical device people that are on this call. I think Ryan Lucci's on. Ryan was a medical device uh, rep too, right? Kevin Brooks is on. Kevin um, Brooks. Ruben but, Jones. I'm sure others. But it, but it, it, it's like this, right? So I was on the um, call last night, I know, with, um, with Stephen Moore. And he's talking about you know prospecting and all of that stuff and you know three people this and that and yeah that's all well and good i think that a lot of people get into a business like this and um and when they don't they don't have the relationships or they you know like i think for most people on this call that prospecting for instance or net well, i just call it networking and using your network 
is a is a, is second nature to us. Um, but everybody that's been on in in this business for a long in medical device for a long while has a certain amount of credibility that goes along with their name. And so again, it's going back to vetting something out. But I would venture to say one, it, you know, for me, I've got to believe in the product. So once I believe in the product and what it can do for the patient, then, you know, that's why I say all bets are off because it's like this. It's you can walk in and you can speak with confidence because you know that the device is going to help the patient. Just like if I'm selling a total knee and I think it's the greatest thing since sliced bread, you know, um, um, you know, when the next gen knee came out for Zimmer um, almost 20 years ago, it was such a such an advancement at that time. I could walk into anybody with confidence and sell that and sell that knee system way back then. And so same thing with this. This is so this is so far and above anything or any company that offers a supplement that you should be able to walk in and not only talk about it with confidence, but then at the same time, like he just said, um, it it's it it provides such a revenue stream too. And that's like you got to feel good about all of that. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it, what you said about uh, the next gen me and having full confidence in something. When you're getting into this business, you may, you know, you've done all your due diligence and stuff, but you don't know how those first couple of sales calls are going to necessarily go. So there is some nervousness to that. So, so back to Sut, I just, so how did, you know, knowing, having that nervousness about the decision that you made and, having your first couple meetings with the physicians and just hearing the overwhelming positive response that they had, how did that make you feel about the decision that you made to join us? So you and I, Dan, have uh, had some little bickering in the sense that I thought that I can control the meeting, right? Like in medical device sales, we're all type A personalities. We see one, we do one, we teach one, right? And I was clueless. And that's why I keep bringing up Lawrence. And I hope Lawrence can chime in. But, you know, to learn from such a, you know, a individual that's always bought into healthness, right? Uh, wellness care centers that he's owned and so forth to, for him to dive into this. What I learned from those meetings is that doctors do care about patients outcomes if you break it down in the right way right like if i if i came into those early meetings i would have broken up the spreadsheet i would have let them know how much money they can make and how easy of it a, a an opportunity for the staff to make money it might have gone the different direction if they didn't get the full picture of this so um you know i'm, I'm looking forward to the july 11th meeting in boca which you know i'm bringing my parents i, I share that with you to learn more about this and to be honest like i just don't see how a doctor would say no on all spectrums of this opportunity health for the patients which if you're in med, med device cells faster recovery inflammation's down um etc their outcomes are going to be better. They're not going to get the infected patient that I have to deal with tomorrow morning at 8.30 that we've taken back three times already, right? So they got to look at the other side of it as well. And there's individuals like yourself. Jerry's got obviously a great grasp of the way he's explaining it. Um, and Lawrence, the education for these guys is utmost important because they're clueless. Let's just be honest. They, they don't, know, right? Or don't care. Yeah. They don't care, right? They don't make money. They only make money from doing surgery. Into the office, and they got a fix, and that's that's all they care about, yeah. right? So it's been an eye awake awakening experience for me to learn the other side because we've always been on just one side of it, and <laughs> to have my father, that's a board certified general surgeon, to explain why these supplements are so good for an individual has been beneficial for me as well. Yeah, awesome. Um, Dan, um, can I just chime in for a second on that? So, so um, she's on mute, but my daughter, who's a RN, she's a BSN, is on this call listening in, and um, she looks at it from the clinical side, which is, uh, you know, so we're all salespeople, and it's refreshing, and I know there's a lot of, um, you know, healthcare professionals that, that have got into this business, too, 
but to hear this from the clinical side and how what it can do for patients from somebody on the clinical side just reinforces you know should reinforce everything that that we're doing um and um and i think that's an awesome way to approach it i think having some clinical people involved with this uh, is is a big advantage for us no absolutely um you know that's what's great about this business is we have people from all walks of life whether it be clinical sales physicians um you know so that's that's what we have on our team so i think we have a huge advantage um in having that depth of knowledge and people that we can kind of bounce ideas off of and rely on but you know without the physicians and then buying into this we we really don't have anything um so for you sut how gratifying was that validation from those first couple of physicians that that they saw the opportunity for both for their patients and for their practice right so it's you could look at it both spectrums right gratification for for the doctor and the practice which was something that i remember sitting in the uh over in, in the uh, patient area and and lawrence looked at me and goes this this is fun this is fun because you're helping out the business you're helping out the patients and you're helping out the doctors and i'm sitting here going i'm sitting in a patient area and this is fucking work <laughs> I'm not right now right but after those two meetings right you start to see the benefit and the smiles <laughs> from the doctors and they see the benefit that the staff can make i mean it's it's hands down beneficial for everyone and so then i walked out of there and talked to lawrence i'm like okay it's starting to become a lot of fun when you see easy success right at least for a sales rep in the world we are man there's so many competitors there's no competitors in this world. Yeah. There's not a scanner out there that can check anything in 30 seconds and give validity for the patient and the doctor. So what, that, was a, that was the one thing that I saw the lights go off on a doctor going, we can provide validity when there's so many doctors I talk to lounges now, they're like, yeah, we, we do supplements. I'm like, but you have a scanner. No, I want to lease a scanner on the own, but we have our own supplement program. No, it's not gonna happen. So they can't validate it. So this is a company that can do the whole picture, which is awesome. And it's been great success in one week. I mean, one week, Dan. Um, yeah. two seconds, and it's right? fun, right? I mean, we talk every day and we talk about how fun it, fun it is and how it's yeah. fun it is getting that response from the physicians and seeing their light bulb, the light bulb go off. And, yeah. you know, now I can really do something that's going to benefit my patients, not just surgery to fix something, but I can be proactive in helping my patients so absolutely um thank you for sharing really appreciate it Sut. Um, Got it down. you're doing an amazing job and uh i'm looking forward to, to some really great things so absolutely. thanks thanks for being here yeah. um just one more quick thing because of kevin brooks i just wanted to chat with you really quick i know you had some really really good traction going prior to COVID 19 and uh then those kind of things kind of went on the back burner um can you talk a little bit about your maybe your strategy for revisiting those things and um how things are are going for you as things start to open up yeah it's um it was definitely a struggle because everything shut down and you know, nobody was going out the doctor's offices were all closed you know i was stuck at home uh, all we were doing were emergency surgeries and those were few and far between um so it was very frustrating um uh, you know not being able to do this and you know i i basically just stopped for you know about six to eight weeks i haven't really done anything with it so it's um you know i'm just about to it's time for me to get back on the horse and and, and get out there because uh and this is great for me because i haven't been on a call in quite a while it's, it's yeah you super motivating it's um you know it's great to hear all the people out there working on it but and it's and that's all it takes is just getting out there and talking to people so, um, you know, I haven't scanned anybody in several weeks now. So tomorrow's the day. Um, I got a, I know this one doctor that who's in charge of bringing all the uh, new business ideas to his practice is going to be operating tomorrow at the hospital I'm going to. Um, I've spoken to him briefly about it and he was intrigued. Um, and I just haven't had a chance to scan him. So hopefully tomorrow's the day I get to scan him. There's also another surgeon who's a partner um 
you know, he, I scanned the doctor and he was, he, he was off the chart. He was platinum already without doing any supplements. So it was, you know, but he was very interested. He, he saw the value in it and he talked to his partner about it and his partner just kind of blew it off from him without ever seeing the scanner. That, so, was, that was prior to COVID-19. So that was prior to COVID-19. Yeah. So now you, uh, now you go back to him and his tune may have changed. Right. Right. Yeah. So, um, so I'm hopefully going to get to that surgeon on Thursday and, uh, and, and scan him and show him the value and, and, and hopefully get these two practices, which are huge practices, um, you know, kind of back on board with this. Um, and then it's just revisiting some of the people that had some interest in it who, were, who wanted to start but didn't start because of COVID. So I'll get back with those people. But, uh, you know, I'm jazzed up to get, you know, to get this rolling again. Yeah. Um, for me personally, the supplements have just, I'm blown away. Um, you know, you, you cut your skin and, you know, I'm, I'm going to be 60 years old this year and it would take forever to heal. You know, you put a Band-Aid on it, it would still take a week, maybe two weeks even. I, I've been out, you know, working in my backyard recently. I've cut myself almost every day from prickers and stuff. And it's, I just, I was just looking at my skin today. I'm like, I just had these huge cuts on my arm a week ago and they're gone. They're completely and, healed, right? They're completely gone. I mean, yeah. it's like, what happened to them? <laughs> yeah without a band-aid without anything and it's just yeah you know, that's what blows me away is i see my own body um how the supplements are working and, and making me healthier so i feel better i sleep better um and just the inflammation i've had in my body has gone away and pain my knee and that sort of thing so you know i'm a total believer in the supplements um i've got some some customers that are on them that are having good results with them as well uh and you know this company is great. The products are super. The, the science is behind it. And uh, the scanner is what, what makes it. It's, you know, and it is fun. So I can't wait to get back there and have some more fun because, um, like Jerry said, these look, we've just opened up here in Connecticut with surgeries. And the last two and a half weeks have been extremely stressful because all the doctors are all jammed up. They've got all kinds of patients that are wanting surgeries. And it's just been you know, day in and day out, just running around instrument sets, implants, um, running a surgery from one hospital to the next and, you know, making sure your stuff is there for the next day. And it's, uh, it's way too stressful. And, uh, Especially after you've had a couple of months off and you go back to that, you're just right. like, how am I still even doing this at 60 years old? Right. You know? Exactly. So, yeah. So awesome. Thanks for sharing, Kevin. I, sure. I, know, I know you had a ton of really, really good. <laughs> questions, so you know, once you get back to it, things are going to, things are going to start happening again. And uh, looking forward to, to getting you to place your first couple of scanners. And for those of you, uh, I don't think I've really talked about this before, but I had surgery back in October. Um, I dislocated my thumb and tore some ligaments. And uh, I had been on the supplement. I had been on LifePak Nano and AgeLock Youth prior to that surgery for, you know, six months or so. And uh, I came back for my one week follow up with my doc and my incision was completely healed. And he looked at it. He's like, I can't even believe that this thing is completely healed in a week. So that's kind of the power. You know, I attribute that all to being on the supplements because prior to that, I was having the same, same deal as, as Kevin, I would get a cut and, you know, I'd be nursing it for a couple of weeks, putting, um, you know, uh, um, putting some salve on it and a Band-Aid and things like that on it, it still take two weeks to heal. But now, like, everything just heals up really, really quickly. So I'm a, a huge believer in the products as well. So thanks, guys. Um, I know Ryan Lucci has a couple of, uh, of people that he wants to chat with a little bit. So, Ryan, if you're there, if you could uh, unmute yourself. and Absolutely. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate it. And um, thanks, thanks for sharing. And I know you said that you – you humbly said you placed a couple scanners this month and if you could for a second stop being so humble and give the people on the call an idea of, of exactly how many scanners you're placing and kind of what you have in the pipeline yeah i'm not a big i don't like to talk about myself that much so we'll just we'll just skip over that if you guys don't mind <laughs> well, Dan's, Dan's placed quite a few and he's 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 rocking it and 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 doing awesome stuff so um but thanks for sharing, Dan. Thank you as well, Jerry, Kevin. Uh, so that was awesome. And I guess I'll speak um, just briefly since we're, we're talking about our why. And, and Dan, one thing you said is when you were kind of vetting this and looking into the opportunity, would you still consume these products if you were not promoting them? 
And um, that was one of the questions that I asked as well. You know, I've been in nutrition and working out my whole life. I've wasted a lot of money on nutraceuticals and supplements. And um, after I looked at the clinical data and uh, from the products to the clinical data, I'm sorry, to the um, studies on the scanner, um, you know, I knew this was something that I could stand behind passionately and, and, and take these products, whether I promoted them or I didn't promote them. So that was a huge part of it for me as well. Um, and, and, you know, finding my why of, of knowing that I want to, that I'm very passionate about prevention and preventive medicine. And I, I, that's what I want to help, um, change in America, shifting from sick care to health care. So that's, you know, part of my why. And then the other part is knowing that, you know, just briefly on my story, which several of you know, you know, having been cut from both of my corporate medical device sales positions after being a top sales rep, and then all of a sudden cut basically both times after being uh, with the company and promised the world and et cetera. And then all of a sudden I'm without a job. I had to take a step back and really realize, you know, do I, do I want to do this corporate um, game, if you will, again, or do I want to be in control of, of my income, of my future, of where I'm going and stop trading my time for money and, um, you know, really investing in something that is going to be um, sustainable and long lasting. And one thing that really kind of sticks with me that, you know, I'm sure a quote many of y'all have heard from Warren Buffett is if you're not find it, if you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you will work until you die. And that's one of the things as well, you know, in f finding a, um, an opportunity that provides a residual income stream that I don't, that I don't have to worry about if I take a vacation or if I have to take time off to attend to, to matters, whatever, if I'm still going to be making money and, and so on and so forth. So, um, a couple of reasons to my why, but I will jump into it and, and want to introduce some people on the team, a couple new people that have just come on board. One of them is Julie and she is um, um, in Indian, Indianapolis and she has come on board just probably about three weeks ago and she's already crushing it and putting a whole bunch of people on product and has a couple really awesome meetings coming up um, with chiropractors and, and some other physicians. She has about 16 years experience in the women's healthcare space and in imaging. And so, um, Julie, if you're on here and you kind of want to um, speak to, you know, your why and why you um, decided to come on board with us and, and, and some of the things that you're doing. Yeah, well, uh, thanks, Ryan. Um, yep. So I got my scanner about two weeks ago and um, Ryan actually reached out to me on LinkedIn. Um, and it was several months ago, probably January. And I read through the email and, you know, at that point I was working clinical in the OR with Hologic doing breast cancer, working with breast cancer devices, um, helping remove breast cancer, lymph nodes and all of that. So I've been kind of in oncology on the other side of healthcare, you know, trying to save people from dying versus helping them be preventative. And I think um, when the, the virus hit, the OR shut down, I suddenly found myself with a lot of time on my hands. And, and I, like Ryan, have been with corporate jobs that restructured, and I made a ton of money and was one of the top reps, and then the next thing I know, I'm, I'm no longer working for them anymore. And it's, I've done, it's been twice in a row, and I'm like, this is the universe telling me something's gotta change, right? So when I went back, I think it was in March, and reread Ryan's email, and I started to kind of look up on the internet and I reached back to him and said, okay, I need more information. And um, Ryan sent me studies, <coughs> videos, and, and I've been looking at trying to do something on my own for a while. My father's been telling me for, for years, the only way you're going to ever really make any money and be able to you know, live a life you want is you got to get, find something that you love that you can, like, like Ryan said, make money while you sleep. So, um, I got tired of renting my time out to corporate and, um, and really began to look at this. And I have to tell you that on a personal level, 
Um, I had surgery last October and had thyroid cancer. And I've had, I, I was an athlete and always in great shape. And the last year I've been struggling with my health. And I can tell you, I was taking so many supplements, wasting money and nothing was working. You know, nothing seemed to help. And, and I was searching. And um, so searching for myself, but also searching for something to do with my life. And, and, uh, and when I ran into this and Ryan and I had quite a bit of conversations, something, my internal voice just said, this is it. So, you know, this is what you got to do. This is, this was, this is the universe saying, here it is. Now you got to take your chance and run with it. So I did. That's awesome, Joy. And um, I, I love your passion. And I know that's why you've already been so successful with this. And, and I see you being incredibly uh, continued success with this because of that passion, because of your firsthand experience um, with what preventive medicine can do. So, um, well, I can tell you that this, this product has already made, has already increased the, impacted me physically. It's already improved the quality of my life. So I know now that there's no reason that I can't tell everybody about it. How long have you been on this, Julie? Um, I purchased, I got product, I think it was almost three weeks ago, but I got my scanner about two weeks ago. Thank you. And then, Ryan, is it okay if I ask a couple of questions? I don't want to interrupt. No, it's not. (laughs) (laughs) All right, I'll shut the hell up then. (laughs) Please, George, go ahead. Um, Julie, with your, with your experience specifically in oncology, um, do you really, you really do believe that supplementation increases, increases optimization? Maybe, maybe, you know, like non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, it's not curable, but would you recommend our supplement specifically to a person who is dealing with that? or somebody who has cancer already, no matter what type it may be, would, would you recommend this as a very valid and smart decision on their behalf? Absolutely, because the antioxidants are huge in, in, in dealing with cancer. I mean, if you're, not, if you're not dealing with the cellular level, you're not, your bodies can't be healthy, right? So the antioxidants is gonna help fight the cancer and give them a, a better shot at recovery. Um, and at least a better shot at quality of life. Awesome, excellent. And when you bring and when you bring that perspective into an oncology into an oncology practice, what what is your approach specifically targeting your knowledge and your experience in this field? Because for me, I've, I'm 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 hearing everybody on here has got 16 years of experience and. And, and, you know, that's amazing. But for somebody like me who does not have that, every, every brain I can pick is invaluable. So I think the biggest thing with oncologists is they know this. They just don't remember. You know what I mean? When you sit down with them and ask them questions, what do you think will help your patients? Um, what do you think antioxidants does for helping fight cancer? You know, ask, get them to start remembering that antioxidants is really an important part of fighting the cancer and recovering from the cancer. Um, So they know this, they just haven't, they first of all, haven't been given a product that they can actually give to their patients that works, that is measurable. And then second of all, they just, a lot of times they're so busy trying to fix the problem that they're not helping to prevent it and to, and actually, and nutrition is huge for, for cancer patients. My father beat cancer three times. And it was a hard time and it was all nutrition that really helped. And he's amazing to me, but um, it's, it's nutrition. It's, it's that whole antioxidants that, that, that has to fight the cancer. It's the only thing that works. So I think if you just walk in and ask questions and you're basically going to walk them down the path to the answer, which is from next product. Um, could I, could I just uh, make a little note on here for George and Julie, that's, very, very well explained. Um, George, there's something called pubmed.org. And if you put whatever disease you want, and then next to it, you put antioxidants, you'll see lots and lots of published papers. I mean, a lot. So 
um, what, what Julie's explaining, I think she's 100% right. I totally agree with her. But you, you don't actually need to know everything. You just need to find, you don't need to know where to find the information. And PubMed.org is one of those places where everybody's familiar, all the healthcare professions are familiar with, and you'll find lots of published papers there, many, many of them. Thank fact, you, Lawrence. Just one other thing. Two, three, two, three weeks ago, we interviewed um, Dr. Lewis Cady, who wrote a white paper on this, and he's a psychiatrist. And I asked him, I said, why would a psychiatrist be interested in antioxidants? And he said, go to pubmed.org and put Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, put what you want in there, and next to it, put antioxidants and see how many papers there are. So this, in, this encompasses, you know, many, many um, sectors of, of, the, of the field. So I just wanted to add that for a second. Thank you, Lawrence. Um, George, I'd also, and Julie, if you did not see the uh, Wednesday morning interview with Dr. Randall out in California, he's an acupuncturist and holistic medicine doc, and he treats a lot of uh, professional athletes as well, um, but he also treats cancer patients. That was a very, very good interview that would help answer some of your questions and give you some ammunition as well. You know, one of the things that I'd like to say, too, is I, I keep this right by my computer when I'm talking to people. I don't know if you can, yeah, it looks like it's right. This is, this is a, um, a list of uh, the searches that are available in the studies on PubMed. I mean, if you look at cancer in, uh, and you put in the word cancer and antioxidant, um, in 2017, there were only 52,950 studies. Uh, and that's gone up to... Uh, 20% this year, there's um, a little, well, yeah, uh, 61,146 studies for cancer and antioxidant. And it's got the thousands of studies here for, as Lawrence mentioned, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, cancers, diabetes, stroke, pain, thyroid disease, surgery recovery, joint pain, rheumatoid arthritis. I mean, there's just an overwhelming amount of information. Uh, it's, you can't be blind to it. And that's, that's where I would look, George. That's fantastic. Thank Mike, you very thank much. You. Are you able, Mike, to drop that into the chat? I actually have that printout. You do? Yeah, awesome. Okay. Hey, I, don't, I don't have it where I can just drop it in the chat. I'd have to scan it, but I can, um, I can make that available. I could, if you'd like, I can actually, so you don't have to do that. I can put that in the chat if you'd like. That'd be awesome. Thanks, George. You're and, welcome. George, thanks so much for your questions. Really great answers. Um, George, I want to say as well, so encouraging to watch you grow. And, and as I'm sure many of you could tell, George has, has a background in microbiology. And, you know, a lot of his in-depth research into the product and what he takes from these studies is right over my head. Like, he's a super smart dude. So, um, George, looking forward to your success as well. And I just want to introduce one more person on my team real quickly, if I can, who's really – rocking it as well and doing a tremendous job. Uh, Trent Wesley, who is in Georgia, who um, has 14 years of medical device sales experience in the GI space with gastroenterologists, um, is, is doing fantastic, <coughs> like I mentioned. He's got a bunch of meetings set up <coughs> and's already put quite a few people on products. So Trent, if you wanna speak briefly to your why and um, kind of what you're working on as well. Yeah, hey, can, can you guys hear me pretty good? Yes, we can. Yeah, can buddy. All right, cool. So um, my why is just, I, I just love helping people, to be quite honest with you. Um, my father's a nephrologist by trade, retired, and I've seen him go in and out of the hospitals all my life. So I, I wasn't going to medical school, but I decided to get in into the selling part of it. And uh, it, it's, it's, it, it's, it's just my, it's what I got in my heart. So. I love helping people out, but the reason why I got into the the this business in particular um, is like like Ryan just said, I was let go uh, myself and forty eight other people um, were let go in early March uh, due to coronavirus, and um, and for me it, it was like a blessing in disguise to be quite honest with you because you know when you're in the storm you don't realize how bad the storm is until you get out of it and. You know, when this opportunity presented itself, um, I was I was all in. So I thought, but then I realized, well, I could probably do this 
and take another job back doing what I was doing and do a double dip. <laughs> so I thought about that for a while as well. And, uh, and Ryan didn't know this, but I was actually interviewing with other companies here recently and, you know, got down to final interviews. And even through that process, I just felt that anxiety. Like, I don't want to go through this rat race all over again, re reinventing myself all over again. And so I actually pulled my name out of contention for two jobs. That I, one, I probably would have gotten and the other one. Yeah, it was something out of my, out of my realm. But nonetheless, I, I decided, because the reason being, I was like, well, I could take this other job, build up my business here for a year while taking that other check because it would be easy money for me. But then I thought, well, what if I just focused on this business and instead of, you know, doing that half time and doing this half time, what if I did this full time? And ever since I've done that, I've, I've, my, my activity has just gone way up. Now, I haven't placed any scanners or anything like that just yet. I've got a lot of great opportunities that have presented themselves and that I've, that I've, that I've kind of seeked out since, since I did decide to, to kind of, you know, throw myself all into this business. And to be honest with you, it's, it's, it, it's just a lot more enjoyable. Um, I've got, like I said, I've got activity going all over the board. I've, I've gotten people that I know on supplement, uh, which is one way of, you know, generating income. But I've got other people, other clinicians that that are ready to to buy the scanner. And actually, followed up with one today, wondering what you know, you know, if he was going to poop or get off the pot. And he let me know that he was really interested, but he's opening up another practice. And so with that you probably have a second scanner. So I said, oh, take your time. So, uh, so that's, that's, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of things that are going on behind the scenes, actually. And then here recently, and I know, Mike, you've seen some of my posts on Facebook and things like that. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had a, a conference where they talked about utilizing social media. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't start LinkedIn until mid-March when I got laid off. And since then, I've generated a lot of, a lot of new leads through LinkedIn, through Instagram, through Facebook, um, a physician that I, a friend of mine that I knew was a physician, but never really even talked to him that often, uh, signed off on one of my, uh, you know, he commented on one of my posts saying that he was a huge Pharmanex proponent. And I would never would have known that had I not, you know, used, you know, put that post out there. So, um, and I'm talking to him now about not just, you know, using the supplement himself, but maybe having a scanner in his office as well. So, um, and then lastly, I've got, uh, we were on a call last night and they talked about how, you know, trying to recruit folks to the, to the meeting in July and, uh, you know, just utilizing the zip codes and things like that. And I had a lot of contacts down in, in that, you know, Southern Florida area. And I had three conversations today and two of those folks may end up going to the meeting. So, and, and become, and coming on board, but, um, you know, a lot of things are going on. A lot of good, good activity is going on. And I, I, I actually want to introduce a friend of mine that's on the call tonight. Uh, he probably didn't want, want to say much, but his name is Robert Kirk. He's on the call right now as well. I'm trying to recruit him into the business too. He doesn't have the medical sales experience like most of us do. But Mike, you can talk to the fact that you were a businessman and have developed a great business for yourself doing this. So you don't necessarily have to be the, the scientific guru that, that George may be, but you can have a business acumen that, that could get you through this business as well. And so I'm learning that also. So there's a lot of good opportunity out here for us. Um, I'm loving what I'm doing. I can go just cut my grass and at, you know, Friday morning and not worry about my, a manager riding by seeing me do it. You know, you just can do whatever, do whatever you want and work however you want. And, you know, this, the, the, the income will take care of itself in the end for me. So I believe in having irons in the fire and the more irons I got the more, more opportunity to present itself. So that's all I got for you. Amen to that, man. That's Amen great, to Trent. That. So, so we talk about it all the time, and it's, you know, to be successful in this business, it's not only the drive and desire, but it's consistency. And it's great to see that now you're being a little bit more consistent and focusing a little bit more on the business, but you're starting to reap more of the rewards from that. So kudos to you for that. that that's awesome. Hey. It's awesome, Trent. And I'll just say real fast as well, your story is similar to mine and I know Julie's as well. I was in, right when I came on board with this, I was in a final round of interviewing for a position that I almost had. And I said, no, 
don't feel right. Energy isn't right. Uh, you know, this is, I'm, I'm not going to go through with it. And then after that point, things started happening for me. I redirected my focus into what I really believed in and something that I, I saw as positivity and, and things started to flourish. I know that same experience um, was the same with Julie just a few months ago as well, but um, awesome. Thanks for sharing. And Rob, welcome on the call as well. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Um, I just, otherwise, I just, Dan, that's, that's I just all I got. to make so. a quick comment because you, you said about changing healthcare in the U.S. And I firmly believe that, that with, with the right people and the right team, which I think that we have, well, I know that we have, um, we're going to be able to make a huge difference in, in transitioning doctors from sick care to actual health care. And I'm sure you've all heard the, the saying, it takes a village. Um, and, and, you know, we've got a lot of like-minded people here with a lot of experience. And I want you all to think about, think of this as your village. And we're all here to help each other. We're all here to help you be successful, help you with making calls, bouncing ideas off, and all of those things. And together, we're, we're going we're gonna to make, make a positive change in healthcare. So, Michael, um, Lawrence, do you guys have anything to add before we wrap it up? Yeah. Um, if I may, just very briefly, um, taking up on the visit with Sat, um, and basically where we are, um, Sat, I was telling, I would like you to think that we've got a Rolls Royce with a Ferrari engine, and that gives us the attitude, but we've got to be very humble about it to to know what we know that we can we can help the physicians with what they need. They don't know they need it but we've got to show them they need it. So it's an attitude of being able to show them. And when at, with one of the doctors we went to see, there were two doctors and one of them had a daughter. The daughter was the office manager. So we scanned the three of them. One of the doctors was very fit. He's an athlete <coughs> and he scanned in the green. And the other two scanned in the orange, typical American average standard American diet. So that was a validity also for the scanner because they said, oh, well, if he did, you know, he's so good, then we're going to be in the doo-doo. And they were. So that is important where you, you, you actually start to make it fun with a comparison. And then the fact that the daughter was the office manager where she could see the money for the practice, they see 90 patients a day. That's huge. They probably will have two or three scanners there within two or three months. Um, so um, I, I also wanted to mention something that, um, you know, I thought Sat was going to be a little upset with me when I, we were waiting in the waiting room and I said, I don't do that. And then he had lunch and I said, you don't do that because it's a waste of time and waste of money. So um, in fact, this is a point that I want to make that, that you don't need to do that. We can do everything without having to go driving all over the planet and buying lunches and sitting in the waiting room waiting for the physicians to come out they're too busy so anyway i just wanted to say attitude is a huge part of this know that we have something spectacular that the doctors need that we can help them so they can help their patients and we they don't even know that they need it until they see it and then they say oh my god this is what i need no brainer as one of the docs said awesome thank you Thanks for yeah, that. It's really appreciated. I would, uh, I'd just like to follow up a little bit with that and um, and say that we've got we, we're running out of time, so I just wanted to get this in really quick. That uh, we are still working on the website. Dan and Kate are still uh, vigorously working on that. They ran into a, a little hiccup that we want it designed a certain way, and the uh, the company's actually having to write some code that uh, to, to make it the way to make, to make the way we want it. So. Um, kudos to them for, for continuing to work on that. It should be available within the next couple of weeks, we're hoping. Um, and also, uh, on last night's call with Dr. Moore, they talked about uh, the meeting July 11th in Boca Raton. That is something that we can leverage. Uh, if you know anyone in Florida, um, that's something that you would want to invite them to, whether they're interested in uh, the business as a rep or as a physician. This is a high-level meeting that uh, we're talking about. It's it's making up for 
you know, coming close to making up for our uh, Utah trip, which was canceled. So um, I would encourage you to invite anyone interested in the business, whether they're a physician or a rep to this meeting. And if you can attend, again, I highly recommend it. There's gonna be a lot of validation there. We've got some great speakers that normally speak at, uh, in Utah, um, Scott Bennett is flying in. Uh, he's the, one of the uh, founders of um, Healthcare Alliance. So it's gonna be a fantastic meeting. I, I look forward to seeing everyone there. Awesome. Thanks. One, Thanks. Quick, one other quick thing, um, Dan, excuse me, one other quick thing. I want to congratulate Mike Cook, um, who's actually qualified for the trip to Australia and also now the trip to Hawaii. And the reason I want to mention that is because right now there is still a possibility that anyone on this call could actually qualify for an all expenses paid for two people to go to Hawaii. And you just have to have certain qualifications which which you guys are already on the way to doing and and it's it's something that of course we can all afford to do that but it's so much nicer when it's all paid for 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 you and your partner your wife your husband whatever to be able to do that too so kudos to michael and kudos to to dan and ryan and 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 everybody on the call you guys you'll rock it there you go He's, yeah, that's his partner. That's his, that's his taking to Australia. Come on, Mike. <laughs> hey, Lawrence. Yes, sir. So, so this is like, so if anybody likes horse racing, so this is like a race. So I want you to watch the Belmont Stakes from Secretariat's last race. So, well, that would okay. be me. Okay, but look for Seabiscuit. That no, no, no. Really, that's a tearjerker. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I want you to watch, <laughs> go to YouTube. <laughs> Go to YouTube and watch Secretariat's last race and listen to what the announcer says when they get to the last quarter of the race. Okay. So that would be me. <laughs> All right. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, I'll guys. Do that. Thank um, you. Yeah. Everybody do do yourselves a favor and really recruit to this uh to this event on July eleventh in Boca Raton. I think I have uh, five people confirmed already. I'm going, Michael's going, Lawrence is going, Ryan, are you gonna be there? Well, yes, I will. I'm sure Ryan will be there. We're gonna have a bunch of team members there. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun. Uh, it'll be a great educational experience. So see if you can't recruit some people into that as well to help build your team. So I just wanna leave everybody with uh, a quote that I read today. Uh, I've seen it before, but I uh, was just reminded of it today, and that is that health is an investment, not an expense. So thanks, everybody, for joining us tonight. Um, really Thank you, Dan. Taking the time out of your day to Thank you. Time. Good job, everyone. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Have a good week. We'll see you next you. Tuesday. All right. Have a great evening.